What's going on everybody? Tyler here and I'm excited because I just got a new bass amp. You can see right here I got the Galleon Kruger Legacy 800 amp head sitting on top of the uh, Neo 212 cabinet and uh, so far I've had it for about a month and I've loved every minute of it. Got a lot of features and we're going to go through some of those features briefly. We're going to talk about some of the tones that I'm using for it and we're going to maybe play through a couple of different options that you might consider using. Starting with the amp head. It is an 800 watt lightweight bass amp head. It has an analog preamp with overdrive. It has Galleon Kruger's classic four band EQ and the overdrive section is foot switchable. Aside from that, underneath the EQ you can see the bump, the contour, and the presence switches and then like most everything it has a, a line out and it also has a unbalanced quarter inch effect send and return another feature that they added to this series of amp heads which is common amongst amps now is the aux input and the headphone output so that you can actually plug your tunes right into the amp head and practice just all in here like it's its own little studio headphones and all that's pretty much it for the amp head on the cabinet side of things. This is an 800 watt 4 ohm closed back bass cabinet. It's got some high frequency dampening on the inside which prevents upper frequency interference. Features two custom 12 inch Neo speakers, a 1 inch horn style tweeter, and this metal grill on the front which they claim is near bulletproof. I would not shoot it with a bullet however. That's pretty much it for the specs. Let's go through uh, you know, some of the tones that you might be rocking with. Right now, I got the DI coming out of the back of the amp, and I also got a 57 on the uh, bottom speaker down here, just so that you can get a little bit of a feel for what the 12-inch uh, cabinet sounds. The 12-inch speakers just have such a, a brightness and a clarity to them that I just fell in love with. So I'm used to playing 10-inch speakers on my bass cabinets, and that's mostly all that I've ever used. I've had a 12 in the past. But jumping to the 212, it's really nice for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's super bright and it's super clean. So as your strings die, you don't notice that loss of high end as quickly as you do with some tens. Aside from that, it's a perfect size for a lot of different things. It's great for gigging, which I've taken it to several gigs now and it's been wonderful, but also it's been great for having here in the bedroom to play with. So I've been basically plugging into my interface and when I practice bass at the house, I'm always just playing through logic or whatever and that's, that, that works, but I didn't realize how much I was missing out on just having a bass amp ready to go right here. Anyways, let's, uh, let's play with the settings. I'm going to go through these little notches you got on the bottom, but realistically, the EQ is going to sound different depending on what room you're in. In my bedroom here, I've got the... Uh, I've got everything mostly flat. i got a little bit of the low mids and a little bit of the high mids rolled back slightly, and even the high end rolled back slightly because... These strings are brand new. Try this bump. I don't notice a whole lot of bump with the bump knob, but I do notice a little bit of a roundness increasing on the low end. So without, with. It's all worthless bass playing right there, but whatever. All right, we got a contour switch. No contour. Add the contour. I mean, it's a usable feature. I think that that would be really nice when you're trying to blend really well with the group. Now, I'm never trying to blend. I want everyone to hear me, so I like leaving those mids in there. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But realistically, if I was going to want some contour, I would probably add the contour myself. And then we got presence. That sounds like a uh, like a like a high band parametric EQ with a large quotient. 
just spread out over the top end and it's not boosting a whole lot, but it's just nice and smooth. Truthfully, I'm never gonna use any of those knobs. I like leaving my stuff, bass and amp, as flat as I can and I make small adjustments to the bass, the mids and the highs to make it sound like what I'm used to. All right, I know you guys are gonna wanna hear this drive thing. I don't use drive on my amps, but since we're here making a video about this amp, I might as well touch on it. I'm not a drive guy. I'm really not. Never have been. Won't say I never will be, but um, I don't find that for me using drive is I would rather, even if I'm playing something heavy, I'd probably find another way to crunch it up other than using the built-in drive on that uh, on this amp. We touched on the specs of the amp. We touched on the specs of the cabinet. I think this is a great combination and I'm looking forward to using it at some of my gigs next year. Now, you know, I love to go direct when I can, but uh, I decided that it would be an appropriate decision for me to get a bass amp should it come necessary. And like I said, right here for the bedroom, it's great. Also, it's great for recording. I've been doing a lot of in-house recording right here and sending out from this preamp into my focus right, I got the focus right Claret right over here, and sending the uh, mic'd cab mix engineer who mixed the last thing that I sent this to him on was really happy with what uh, he was able to achieve with this cabinet. So thank you guys for sticking around to check out the Galleon Kruger bass rig that I just got. If you guys are interested, I will have a link in the description where you can check one out. If you purchase from that link, it will greatly help me out and support this channel. Thank you guys and see you next time.